I'm Tracy Rogers. I'm director of the Forensic Science Program at the University of Toronto, Mississauga. Very nice to interview you, Dr. Rogers. Um, so let's start off. What is forensic science? Well, forensic science is actually many different types of science. And what unites us is that we use our science to aid the legal system. That includes things like uh, investigative. Usually it includes things like uh, understanding evidence, locating evidence, um, displaying that evidence, analyzing that evidence. That's really what our focus is. Awesome. And I'm sure a lot of us watch a lot of movies like or shows like CSI. So in movies, um, forensic scientists are seen out in the field helping the police solve um, crime scenes. So how is the pursuit of forensic science different from the movies and what else might be involved? Well, for some forensic scientists, it is quite realistic to go out to the crime scene. So if, for example, my background here is a crime scene and that is the kind of work that I do. I will go out to crime scenes, but there's so many different types of forensic science. Some are lab forensic scientists like forensic chemists and forensic biologists, and they don't typically go out to scenes. So one of the things that the movies or TV tend to do is portray forensic scientists as the same. We all do this one, well, this job that involves going to a scene and then going into the lab and then looking at the body and then doing this and then doing that. And actually, those are the jobs of many different types of forensic scientists. Thank you. That's super cool for um, and your explanation. Now we understand there's actually a very different subcategory of forensic science and that we all work together as a team. Um, so my next question is, what are some of the big discoveries in forensic science so far? Probably the biggest one that people hear about all the time are the advances in DNA. And DNA can be used to can make connections between people and people, people and scenes, all sorts of connections, even from the smallest amounts. So that's kind of exciting. Um, some of the most interesting things happening with DNA at the moment is the ability to try to reconstruct what a person looks like from their DNA. So that could help with identifying uh, bodies that have been remain unidentified for long periods of time, or when you've got somebody's DNA left at a crime scene, trying to reconstruct what the person responsible looked like. And then one of the other super cool things that are happening are the virtual reality types of reconstructions of crime scenes. So, you know, down the line, maybe you can imagine somebody putting on their, their VR glasses and sitting in the jury and looking around and being able to see the crime scene and what um, you know, the investigators saw and what they did and what they learned from that. That's super fascinating because I know in biology, we also use a lot um, DNA because it's super important tool for us to look at genetics, ethics, and the VR is something I think is very fascinating with now the technologies. Um, it will be very cool to actually have the jury to see the crime scene. Um, so my next question is, how has better understanding for instance, forensic science changed our daily lives today? I would say probably for most people, you might not notice that forensic science is busy working away in the background. Um, but if your life ever intersects with crime in any way, that's when it's going to become apparent. In the background, forensic science is working to help exonerate people that maybe were wrongfully convicted or helping to provide evidence that will um, allow somebody who has committed a crime to be convicted. So getting people off the streets that should be off the streets and hopefully getting people back out of jail if they shouldn't be there. Yeah, I absolutely think um, even for us every day, forensic science is very important to maintain our um, justice system mm -hmm. and have people have faith in it. Um, so what do you think is the future of the field? Well, considering that forensic science is so broad and there's many, many different sort of areas of forensic science, there's many different futures and things that are happening in our future. But I would say overall, one of the biggest, um, I guess the, the biggest pathways or things that our people are really focusing on is doing more with less. 
So finding these trace and tiny pieces of evidence and being able to work from those tiny pieces or hard to see items and learning more and more and more about them and being able to visualize the evidence better, being able to you know, extract more information from it, whatever that type of evidence might be. Oh, that's very fascinating. And thank you for your explanation. Now let's switch a gear a little bit. Um, you're a scientist. So how did you first become interested in science? Uh, I can't even remember how I became interested in science. I would say that I probably was always interested in how things work or what makes things work. Not in the sense of wanting to become an engineer, but always just asking, well, why? And wanting to find out more, wanting to find out more. So in my field, forensic anthropology, that means looking at the human skeleton. And I wanted to learn more and more about how the skeleton works. What can we learn from the skeleton? Yeah, and I think curiosity is really um, a, the um, theme that we keep um, seeing during our interviews. And it's very important for scientists to always have their curiosity. Um, as a woman and as a now you're studying in the forensic science field, do you face any hardships on your career path? Uh, many hardships, because now everybody knows forensic science. It's all over TV and movies everywhere. But when I first started, my field in forensic anthropology wasn't even really a thing in Canada. And there were only about two or three people who were even doing it part of the time to help police. So my initial hardship was simply finding someone I could learn from. And the second part was there were no careers, there were no jobs specifically for forensic anthropologists. So the second part really became developing, helping to develop that field, helping to open up these possibilities and showing people why it was so important and how we can contribute to uh, resolutions of the, the identity of, the, of your missing person or finding human remains and those sorts of things. Yeah, um, I'm sure with now all the new technologies coming out, the field will have even more brighter future and uh, more scientists can definitely um, contribute to the field. Um, so my last question is, do you have any, any advice for kids who may be interested in STEM? Yes, there's so many opportunities in STEM and there's so many pathways that people can follow. So follow what you love and you'll see that all these opportunities begin to open up in front of you. So follow those opportunities, track down, talk to people who are in fields that interest you. Most of us are very happy to chat about you know, what we do and how we got there and to help out other people who are interested in following in that same type of pathway. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Rogers. It's a pleasure to have you as our guest.